This video will discuss principal moments of inertia and computing rotational constants from the XYZ coordinates of molecules. So in the previous video, we discussed the moment of inertia tensor for molecules, where we have a symmetric real 3x3 three three matrix, which de describes the resistance to angular acceleration along each of the X, Y, and Z dimensions. And so this being a real symmetric 3x3 three three matrix, it's going to have three eigenvalues. Those are going to be real as well. And these are, are going to be related to our rotational constants. So these the elements of this tensor we defined in terms of units of its mass times distance squared. Our unit of mass was atomic mass units, grams per mole and unit of distance was angstroms, so angstroms squared. So our eigenvalues are going to have the same units as our elements of our matrix, so those are going to be in that unit as well. And there are also going to be three eigenvectors, and these are what we call the principal axes of rotation. So we have the eigenvalues, kind of how difficult is it to rotate around the principal axes, and the eigenvectors, what are those principal axes that we rotate around. Okay, so we are going to want to convert these eigenvalues into a more convenient unit, since atomic mass units times angstrom squared doesn't seem very intuitive to work with. So instead, what we're going to do is convert these three eigenvalues where we have IA is less than or equal to IB, less than or equal to IC, so we sort them in ascending order, increasing resistance to angular acceleration, and we're going to transfer these to units of megahertz and or wave numbers. So when we do that, <clears throat> we're going to go from these eigenvalues to what are called rotational constants. So you may be familiar with these from the rigid rotor model system if you've studied quantum mechanics before. So we had the rotational constant B, which in units of megahertz is going to be 10 to the minus 6 times H over 8 pi squared IB, H being Planck's constant and IB being the middle eigenvalue of this tensor. So it was called B in uh, the rigid rotor because it was the middle eigenvalue of the three for our diatomic molecules. And then we also had B bar, which is the same value but divided by the speed of light, where the speed of light is in units of centimeters per second, three times 10 to the 10th. Okay, so we could get a set of A, B, and C, which are conveniently expressed in megahertz, or A bar, B bar, and C bar, which would be in wave numbers. Uh, typically for small diatomic molecules, you might see rotational constants that are about 1 to 20 wave numbers. But as molecules get bigger and bigger, these, num these values are going to get smaller and smaller. Okay, so we have those three unique values for what our rotational constants are in those unit systems. And that allows us to classify the molecule into some different kinds of uh, rotor types or molecule types. So the first case is where all three are different and all three are greater than zero. So since um, we sorted them in its ascending order here, they're increasing from left to right. When we put them in a denominator, we get the reverse. We get a descending order. A is greater than or equal to B, greater than or equal to C. So in the case where all three are different, it's a different resistance to acceleration around each of the principal axes. You have what is called an asymmetric top. So if you've studied symmetry and group theory in the symmetry and group theory uh, uh, chapter playlist, that would be a molecule that has a, a symmetry which is described as abelian if you've uh, seen those videos on character tables. Right? Uh, we have the case where all three are equal and all three are zero. That would be a monatomic case because there's no, uh, the molecules aren't, don't have any mass away from the center of mass. So that would be a single atom. The point group of that would be called K sub H or KH. We could have the case where A equals B, they're both greater than C, and C is zero. This is what you get in linear molecules. You get one rotational constant that's zero because you can't rotate around the axis of the molecule. 
those would be point groups D infinity H or C infinity V. We have two cases where two of them are equal, one is different, and all three are non-zero. The case where we have the unique one being the smallest is called an oblate symmetric top. The Earth is an oblate symmetric top. It's what you would call an oblate spheroid. It's kind of squished at the poles a little bit and bulging out at the equator. Alternatively, you have a prolate symmetric top where you have the unique rotational constant is the bigger one. So this would be something that's squished in. So whereas this is more like a, 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 CD, a CD disc, this would be more like a, a kind of cylinder that we're used to uh, thinking of. Uh, both of those have <clears throat> have non-abelian point groups, uh, but they are also non-cubic, as we'll define in a second here. So the case where all three are equal and they're not zero, that is called a spherical top. And a spherical top is very high symmetry, and basically every axis, uh, every set of axes you can pick are going to be principal axes, and it's, and it's equally uh, easy to rotate around any given axis you choose. So this is very high symmetry molecules like uh, like octahedral, tetrahedral, icosahedral, things like methane, SF6, or buckyball. Those are cubic point groups. So using this type of information, we can actually remove the, the remaining redundancies in our XYZ coordinates if we choose to. We said there were six redundant coordinates because three of those uh, three n coordinates, or sorry, six, three of those three n coordinates were translations of the molecule, which we can remove by translating to the center of mass, and three of them are rotations, which we can remove by ro uh, going to the uh, principal axes for our molecules, and then we start to approach a situation where we start to get unique coordinates where our 3n minus 6 coordinates of our molecule in XYZ are starting to be unique. So let's take a look at some of these in VMD. So here I've got a buckyball. So this is an example of a spherical top. You notice that kind of no matter how I rotate it, it pretty much looks somewhat spherical. X, Y, and Z are equal to one another. It's equally easy to rotate it around any dimension. Similarly, if I go to methane, methane as well doesn't look as obvious, but is X, Y, and Z are all uh, degenerate with one another. It's equally easy to rotate around any axis I choose. Then we go to something, let's see, yep, cubane as well, being uh, uh, octahedral, has that same kind of X, Y, Z equivalence. What else we can have? Benzene is a is an oblate symmetric top, much like the Earth, kind of bulged around the middle and uh, scrunched at the equators. So this axis is unique, or is that, yeah, this axis is unique, but the this and this are equivalent. We have let's see, benzene, ethane, I believe, is a prolate symmetric top where it's easier to rotate around the unique axis and harder to rotate around the two degenerate axes. Then, let's see, some more examples. Ethene is an asymmetric top, that's D2H, and each of the three molecular axes are going to be unique and have a different um, resistance to angular acceleration. Another kind of symmetric top would just be molecules of, actually, bad example, that is a symmetric top. So never mind about isobutane. I think I picked the wrong one there. CO2, linear, uh, doesn't take any energy to rotate around this dimension because you're not rotating anything, whereas it's equal to rotate whether you're doing it around this axis or around that axis. And lastly, helium, no matter what you do, you can't rotate it because it's just a single atom. All right, so putting all this together, we finally arrive at the final version of the uh, scripts that I've been working up to in my computational chemistry repository. I've actually been working according to notes that is uh, at this URL from uh, uh, David Sherrill at Georgia Institute of Technology, writing this geometry analysis program 
where we're going to do these things like read in XYZ coordinates, compute bond angles, compute bond, or sorry, bond lengths, bond angles, out of plane angles, torsion angles, center of mass, moment of inertia tensor, rotational constants, determine the rotor type, and determine those uh, rotational constants. Okay, and let's see. So in the scripts geometry analysis subdirectory, the final program is geometry analysis that we've been working up to. Got a little uh, indicator there on the head. Some new functions relative to what we had before. Uh, print the principal moments, print the molecule, print the rotational frequencies. Probably some new functions here. Get moment of inertia. Get principal mo uh, get principal moments. There I'm getting the uh, eigenvalues there and getting the rotational frequencies, eigenvectors. Um, some stuff there. Da -da -da. Figuring out the rotor type from the relative values of the um, moment of an, of the principal moments, all that good stuff, and printing everything out at the end. So going from the top level directory to the notebooks directory, the geometry analysis notebook I've been using just as a shell to run these things. If you run this program without any input arguments, as always, it prints out what it needs as an input argument. So I'm going to do up one directory, tab, geom, tab. What shall we do? X, Y, Z, tab. Uh, why not our favorite molecule, benzene? Shift, enter. Geometry analysis for benzene, initial X, Y, Z coordinates. Once again, as, as always, the 12 bond lengths, 18 bond angles, all nice SB2, 120 degrees. <clears throat> 24 torsion angles, 18 out of plane angles, the center of mass, translate to the center of mass, moment of inertia tensor, having those values. It's a symmetric top. Uh, you see that the two of these eigenvalues are equal and one is different. Symmetric top, this is actually an oblate symmetric top. Notice that the third one is the unique one is smaller. The rotational frequencies in megahertz are those values, and in wave numbers are those values there, 0 0.19 and 0 0.095. All right, and then the final geometry is aligned to the principal moments so that the unique axes are the X, Y, and Z axes of our global frame there. Then we print out a nice little completion message so you can use these on any of these XYZ files that I have in that XYZ directory or any others that you come across.